Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Good evening, Karen. I'm here. <laughs> She's here. <laughs> Welcome to the Daily Grower Live. Daily Grower Show Live. It's Friday night, 7.30. Can't think of any other place I'd rather be than right here with you. Right here. <laughs> with me, particularly. With you, yes. Yeah. You're a, a lovely co-host. Well, thank you. Oh, well, excellent. So what are we going to kick it off with tonight? Well... We usually start out by talking about the weather. The weather? No, we're going to talk oh. about the lambing. The the lambing class, our 2021 oh, class of lambs. I and we're going to wanted to talk about the weather. Oh, see, I got a I got a whole line up here. See. What's going on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't ready. She wasn't ready for this, folks. <laughs> all right. So here is an introduction of all of our lambs for this year. Is that right, Karen? Well, just one left. One you left. One right? you left. I actually have her in a pen because I think she's getting ready. Um, but she is not quite there yet. All right. Let's so. introduce the lambs. Hey, North Star Prep Stetter. How you doing? Thanks for joining. Can you guys hear it? Dolly. Yes. 14. She was a second. And then we have Dottie. She was 15. She was third of the season. And over here, we have Dottie's twin brother, Delano, who is our little bottle lamb. Aww. And then we have. Miss Doris. How did you get them all sitting like this? Their moms are out eating and they're like taking a nap. And 18 is Dude, who has also become a bottle lamb. We'll talk about that a little later. And over here. Number 19 is Dulcie. She is the prettiest lamb I think we have ever had. Her, like, the red hair that she has before her little comes in is so thick and curly and soft. It's just beautiful. And then over here, we have number 20, Miss Daphne. So that is the full introduction of all the lambs this season. And out here, we have Miss Amelia, who is yet to lamb. And at this point, I believe she's going to have Duncan's lambs. We shall see. There she is. Yes. All right. So that's all of the lambs for this year. How many so, so far? far? So far, we have eight. Eight. All right. Yep. Cool. Out of seven U's. And we have one U left to go. One, and does that one look like it's going to be having twins? I can't make a guess. She looks huge, but they all... <laughs> <laughs> and at this at this point, I'm so tired. I'm like, I'm trying I don't to get know. you on record to like she's make a, a prediction for she's every got single a really you. Really <laughs> nice utter honor. So it'd be cool if she had twins, and she hasn't lambed before. So it, she'd be kind of like making up for last year if she had twins this year. So that'd be great. Yeah. And how many ewes do we have? Currently, we have nine. Only eight of them were bred because two of those nine are still you lambs from last year. Still too young, right? But one of them bred. Mm -hmm. Caroline. Okay. She's Dude's mom. All right. Well, so everyone, that was just a nice introduction video. Yeah. We've, we've shown, we've actually been live from the barn before, but um, tonight's cold and it's rainy and it's nicer in here. It is. In the office. It's much nicer in here. Chatting with y'all. Um, uh, how many ewes do we have? Are lamb multiples as common as goat multiples? You know, it all depends on the breed, right? It does depend on the breed. And I think 
I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out if I'm like doing something wrong or what, because I feel like we should be getting more multiples, but yeah. we haven't. We had one set of twins last year. So far, one set of twins this year. But we also had one you that was definitely pregnant with twins and lost one. And it, like it passed early on. Mm -hmm. So she only delivered one baby, but that baby was healthy. And yeah. so I don't know. Well, we're we're back here. <laughs> we're on a two week. It's been two weeks since we were live. Last week was Easter. Did yes. you have a good Easter? You know how my Easter was. <laughs> this this is how our Easter was. Yeah. We brought lambs to Easter. A lamb. A lamb. Yeah. To Easter. So this is Delano. Yes. And Delano is a bottle lamb, something that we have not experienced before. We don't want them. We don't want them. Well, we love them, but right. we but love it, all lambs. Yeah, we try not to have them. But we try not to have too many. Yeah. Or any lambs whatsoever and this year we have that are two. bottle fed we have two now so if you see a little look of exhaustion. tiredness <laughs> exhaustion <laughs> on my Karen's face <laughs> it's kind of like she just had how many lambs again eight we have eight yeah. Eight newborns, of which two oh. don't sleep through the night. <laughs> no, because the other Octuplets. ones... Octuplets. The other ones, their moms are all taking care of them. So it's really just like I have twins that aren't sleeping through the night. That's true. So we have bottle lambs this year, and we'll get into why why that all happened when we get down to the discussion yeah. of the of the... Of the show, but I I also wanted to show just two other pictures. Can I show two more pictures? You certainly. These can. are pictures from this week that I just going through my phone and thought, oh, this would be interesting to share. The first one I thought my dad would find interesting is apparently our maple trees are still running, running, and they're running enough, and it was cool enough that there is sapsicles on the trees <laughs> oh my goodness and also i went to the doctor's office this week and this is the first time i've ever seen a dog sled? a dog sled on top of a car <laughs> it looks like a really nice one uh i guess i don't know anything yeah. about dog sleds but that was kind of random and i thought you know there probably aren't too many places in the country that you can see that Right. I, I've never seen it. Before. Never seen. Never seen no. that. Yeah. No. All right. Well, time for our obligatory weather chat. Yeah. It has been raining all week and kind of dreary. Probably doesn't help with the exhaustion. A little seasonal effectiveness disorder. Right. Yeah, that's true. Although <laughs> it it's helping things to like green up outside, which makes me happy. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy. I don't. Right? I had somebody ask me the other day when I was picking up a mattress. Oh, what about the, what do you think about all this rain? And I said, well, the grass is getting green. I like that. Makes the grass grow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty weird. It went from like really warm uh, and everything was brown. And after just one day of like thunderstorms, like big lots of lightning yeah. thunderstorms. Yeah. It's like all green now, despite it still being uh, rainy and and all that. So anyway, uh, yeah, so we're we're just kind of charging on. Uh, I just put up a video, a YouTube video about an hour ago, and uh, there's a lot going on here. We're getting ready to I'm getting ready to go to North Carolina for a couple of days starting on Sunday. Yeah. And the broilers are coming next week. And the lamb apocalypse is upon us still. And well, hopefully it'll be over. I actually have Amelia in a pen tonight because I'm fairly certain that she is going to lamb mm -hmm. like in the next 24 hours. 24 hours. And... All right, folks. Another <laughs> prediction. Another prediction. She, she looks very ready in her. Karen actually is, while we're doing this, watching the barn camera. And that is a sheep in there. See how caved in her sides are? That Those are like early contractions. Oh, yeah. So it's coming. It's coming yeah. soon. It's close. That happens when they start having like a little bit of start of labor. And then when the baby or babies drop down to like get in position, 
then that caused that like caving in mm. and she's had that all day kind of sucks it in so and it's been so wet and cold out i was like it's better right I don't for know. her not well, to have it, right? it well it's not too cold no to no but i don't be she's a first time mom and it would be my luck this year that she would go and have her baby or babies out in the rain and I don't have time to sit out there and watch her today or tomorrow or any day really. Yeah. So I, I was looking at her. I'm like, she's getting ready enough that I can stick her in a pen and just let her have the babies in the pen where she's supposed to, mm -hmm. whether she would choose to or not. So typically we kind of let our use, uh, they're more relaxed if they get to kind of be out with the flock. And so I try to leave them out there until they're laboring or in, even until they deliver. If I'm out there, then I'll just, once the baby comes out, then I just grab it and the mom follows and then put them in a pen. Yeah. But we saw, we saw a video of that last, yeah. last live stream, I believe. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they've all I'm trying to think. Maybe two of them lambed in the pen on their own. Just I left the pens open and they just went in there because it was kind of a quiet corner where they mm -hmm. could go. And then the the rest of them, the other five, have all lambed out somewhere else. And I lured them into a pen with their baby. <laughs> so... She Amelia, has like magic powers, but really Amelia, just... I told her, I was like, she was not happy with me this afternoon when I drug her in there. And I was like, listen, honey, I don't Did have, you have to I like have time with for this. separate her. Like she did not come in. Well, she was in the, she they was, put on the bricks, you know, yeah, just like a dog trying to get was, it in the bathtub. She was in the barn and she was standing there and I was watching her sides like cave in and cave in and I was Oh, you're going to have this baby. So then I was watching her for a little while and then I decided eh, it's not like happening any minute now, but probably in the next, you know, 24 hours or so. And I had to go and run some errands and it was misting and cold outside. So I cornered her and drug her in there. She was yeah. like not having it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Savory Life. How's it going? Thanks for no, joining no. In again. Appreciate you coming on. Uh, yeah. So, man, what it will be like after this lambing season is done. It's It's been so easy, I feel, prior to this year. Yeah. <laughs> this year has just this been crazy. This year has like, put me through the ringer. Mm -hmm. But I was talking to... Uh, our sheep mentor out in Washington the other day. And I was like, you know, I thought I knew what I was going to be expecting this year. Like I had two ewes that were on the, their, their last chance list. And then the rest of them, I was just sure that they would be fine and everything would be as no normal and as expected and nothing has gone as expected. <laughs> and she said, well, you know, that's the humbling thing about being a shepherd. You, you, It doesn't take you long before you realize that you're actually not in control of anything. Yeah. And uh, that you should limit your expectations because most of them will not be fulfilled. <laughs> and I said, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty, that All right. sums it up. So the two lessons of being a shepherd, don't have expectations and don't make predictions. No, <laughs> whatever you think is going to happen is not going to happen. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, we'll get it. Like I said, we'll get into more of that uh, at the, uh, yeah, as we go, as we go to the show. So what's next, Karen? Win of the week. Win of the week, yes. All right. So I got my own win of the week. Do you have it I'm ready? I'm prepared. Oh, yes. Fantastic. All right. I don't have to look surprised uh, like I normally do. All right. I think most of you who are on at the uh, right now know what this what this is. But yes. that doesn't stop you. And if you're re-watching this, feel free to add a comment on the video uh, and share it because we love to we love to hear them. We love to listen. So this basically is anything that you accomplished this week that you're really proud of. And uh Take it away, Karen, while they're uh, typing theirs in. My we'll talk about yours. win of the week is that we have not lost any lambs. Now, that is a good, that's a good perspective because we've lost lambs 
previous two years, right? Yes. And we haven't lost any this year, despite it we being... We have not. Yet. A lot more hands-on. So, I mean, that doesn't mean we're in the clear, but as of right now, all the lambs that have been born were born alive and are still living. And I've had to put some work into a couple of them, but they, they're they doing okay. So, yeah. What's yours? Well, let's, uh, I've got a couple of fun comments here. Ooh. The Google definition said a shepherd is a guide or direct in a per to guide or direct in a particular direction. That's all you can do. So yeah, sometimes not even that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're guiding them into the barn where you can take yeah, better care I of them. Yeah, right? I don't know if I would call it guiding. I mean, like with Amelia this afternoon, yeah. that was not guiding. That was like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the word is. Pushing but... against the grain. Right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Save Your Life says that they are going to uh build an arc three inches of rain just today or in the last two days that was a lot yeah actually i've been like holding fingers crossed all week we haven't had a ton of rain i don't know how much exactly you've had but uh last year we put a significant amount of money down into uh filling the side of our house where water was leaking into the yeah. basement we had water two years in a row and so far it's held this year so Thinking I might not lose any any sleep about that, maybe I hope. <laughs> Are you losing enough sleep about the sheep? Well, or you'll be gone <laughs> this next week, and I'll call you, and I'll be like, ah, "Yeah, gosh. the sheep and the chickens and the rain." I didn't even think about that. Now I'm gonna be worried about that the whole time. I'm gone. <laughs> Appreciate that, hon. <laughs> my win of the week is this doodad right here. Ooh. This is my new vlogging Ooh. camera. Yeah. So I uh, bought this with my own money, <laughs> saved up <laughs> and everything. So yeah, we're hoping that my... Uh, yes, if he could use my money, I said no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not going to sleep at all, that's for sure. Um, so anyway, I bought this with my own money, saved up and everything. And well, I haven't actually been paid the money, but I've earned it all. So true confession there. But I had to get it before I went to North Carolina. So I... Yes. Uh, I'm leaving on Sunday, headed down to Justin Rhodes' place, and I'll come back with some videos of what I did in my time there. So I kind of want to just put it right here, you know? It's, yeah. It's like a part of the live stream. Like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> well, like, have you named it? Uh, Elsa named it for me. It's in oh. the video. It was like Giorgio or something like that. Giorgio? Giorgio, yeah. So yeah. if you don't know, Justin Rhodes names his cameras. He's got his big, normal vlogging camera, and then he's got like the little Canon do you and remember the names? Oh, Big Jerry and Little Jerry. Oh. I was thinking this is maybe Medium Jerry. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's sort of like halfway. I don't think you can take that, though. What? You can't take the Jerry line of no. naming? No. You could name right. it Larry. Jerry and Larry. Well, it's just, well, we'll call it Medium Larry. How about that? Why do we name <laughs> everything Larry? We. What else have we named? Delano like? is now named Larry. Well, that's, he's Larry the Lip. Larry the Lip. <laughs> uh, it is a Canon EOS M50. Uh, with a 128 gigabyte card and a Rode microphone. Oh, I got to hold over here. And uh, I'm going to, as soon as I earn a little bit more money, I'm going to get a, a, a legit lens on it as well. So I'm pretty excited about that because I have, um, I, I have filmed almost all of my vlogs. I got 2,482 subscribers. If you're not subscribed, help me get to 2,500. <laughs> I have filmed almost all of that on a cell phone. And so I am... Cell phones aren't bad. Oh, cell phones are amazing. It's amazing yeah. what you can do with them. I have coached, not coached, I've encouraged a lot of people who said, oh, I just could never start a YouTube channel. I, it's too much money to get into it or I'd be embarrassed. It's embarrassing. It's it's weird to walk around Menards with, you know, well, with just your cell phone, but that's going to feel even weirder with one of these. You know, it's weird to be out in public with it, but it's pretty amazing uh, to have a cell phone that can do that much. And yeah. so one of the th things that stunk the most about it is getting all of the pictures and videos off of it. It was a total pain. I actually had to set up an FTP server on my phone to do it because Samsung won't let you directly copy using your data cable. So hmm. thank you, Samsung. Uh, it's actually a Mark II, also uh, North Star Prep. 
Stetter, uh, it's so new that they didn't even have the software out. He said, strap it to your hat while you're in Menards. Well, I could put it in my mask since they make you wear a mask. <laughs> Just give it one of these, you know, just straight up. <laughs> I have noticed so far, if you listen to watch the video that we or that I just released, it is very quiet when you're talking behind it. If you're out in oh. front of it, it's really, really nice, like way better than the cell phone ever was. But if oh. you're to the side or behind it, it is super quiet. So I don't know if that's the microphone, if it's I mean, I know it's like that because they Probably. all have a they all have a pattern, right? So yeah. They're like really sensitive around the top and then almost nothing perpendicular and then just a little bit below here. I was hoping it'd be way, I was hoping it'd be like better than it is though. So, huh. I'm, so far I'm kind of disappointed about that. So, well, so maybe you just need to have it where you're taking your videos with it pointing. At yeah, there is that. It does encourage me to get out in front of the video more. Yeah. Um, but yes. It is a fluffy mask. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hey, Fluff Life. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining. She's our yeah. neighbor down the street. She um, said she'll take the green grass and the extra eggs any day. Uh -huh. Us too. That's true. Yeah. I've been enjoying some omelets. Yeah. Uh, lots of omelets. The chickens started kicking back in. Yeah. And uh, well, and Maddie is incubating, so which means she quit collecting. We had a week there where, oh, we, yeah, that's where right. we couldn't eat the eggs. We have two Maddie... <laughs> incubators full of eggs in the dining room again. Yeah. Eggs in the dining room in any other situation would sound really great. It would. But in this case, they're not eggs that you can eat. Uh, get a lapel mic. So I was thinking about getting a couple of wireless mics for you and I for when we do live outside in the barn. Oh, I thought that, would that be wouldn't pretty be a sweet. bad idea. Uh, they're like 200 apiece. Oh, I don't need one. <laughs> I can think of other things. I, well, you know, we could. I know. You like all the techie stuff. I I don't get into it as yeah, much. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, I'm spending fun money on it. So yeah. maybe. We'll see. Have a good time then. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I do have my camera strap. Haven't used that yet. Oh. Probably won't. Maybe all I'll right. Go. Cool. Yeah. What else we got for when anybody, anybody else have win of the week there oh, that we missed? Or well, did we let's get see here. Where I got to scroll back a little bit. Oh, we're all the way back at the beginning. Means uh, jump right. money, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's me. Um, the jump. Uh, what else? Oh, I I also I did want to share. I just had to share one video. Okay. Okay. Go for All it. Right. I know this is this is Karen's <laughs> like, stick to the program, Randy. Yeah. Stick to the program. You get off task and then you're like, oh, it, we spent too much time. That's right. You don't want it to be No, I think that was me just picking up the camera. <laughs> but that was, it appeared to be staged, but I actually ran around the center of the kitchen several times trying to get a diaper on a lamb. Well, and, you must have set the camera up at some point, well, deciding yeah, because, that it was worth recording. Well, it's because I was, I was taking a video of me feeding it. Oh. I was home alone, and yeah. I was like, hey, you just go... She's like, well, I got to be back and everything. I got to feed this. And I was like, no, I'll, I'll figure it out. You know, I fed the kids like once. Four kids, whatever. The kids uh, were not great about taking bottles either. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, we didn't, we didn't bottle feed, so it didn't happen very often. But I, I no. did do it once or maybe twice. Yeah. Four kids. You did change diapers more. <laughs> more than. Than, fe than feeding. That's true. The feeding was pretty much my gig. But I, I don't know. I set the camera up because I was yeah. feeding it. And then I got up and was like, oh, you you know, let it, let the lamb, you know, get up. And its diaper is like falling off. So I was trying to. Demo in three weeks. I was, I was trying to get it like, you know, back on. Oh, and no. then there was running. No, oh. no. They said, uh, finally able to get back into our farm from the winter. Huge. Win. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Demo in three weeks. Okay. So are you demolishing something? Is that what demo, or were they asking for a demo of the diaper thing? <laughs> I, I wasn't sure. I laughed. That would be good I laughed because that's what I was thinking. And then I read the other comment and thought, oh, maybe they weren't talking about the diapers at all. 
No, I think they're talking about demolishing. Something. Oh, okay. Well, that's not funny, but very exciting. <laughs> if it's, yes, if it's a planned demolition, that's, yeah. that's really great. <laughs> really, yeah. <laughs> really great. <laughs> All right. So in the past, we've talked about Daily Grower, and I think you guys are aware of what it is. If you're not, it's a content curation site every day, there's a, uh, there's a, um, story that I put up there to help you grow your food, grow your animals, grow your personal yeah. goals, achieve those goals. And uh, and we're going to change it up. We're not trying to go an hour and a half or two hours anymore. We're trying to compress it so we'll be more respectful mm -hmm. of your time. And so in that case, uh, we're just going to share what I thought was the best story of the week and also the story that y'all who are subscribed clicked on the most so uh oh wait let's real quick people yeah. are sharing their wins oh yeah there's some wins let's save your life is restoring a hundred year old abandoned Ooh. farm sweet very cool yeah north star says my win this week was getting further along and designing a website that i thought and then making a fresh batch of kombucha and ordered a miter saw wow you're on fire yeah we can't <laughs> i can't top that no i can't top that that's pretty Not awesome worthy. I, <laughs> or whatever <laughs> Well, Wayne's World action, <laughs> 1993, way to go. Uh, all right, well, tell me all about the website. I would love to hear yeah. all about that. Is that something that you do? Is that like, something you're just trying out for the first time? That's fantastic. I'd yeah. love to hear all about it. Super cool. Yeah. yeah, tell us if that's your day job or something you do on the side. Uh, all right, so this week on Daily Grower, there's a couple stories that I thought were really cool. I tried this, started this week with beginner's guide and just regular guides to gardening. Uh, and in the middle of the week, I was trying to find some stories that were just good overall if you haven't really gotten started with gardening uh, to do that. But Monday, I thought was the coolest. And that was a YouTube video by Diego Footer. If you don't know him, he was part of Permaculture Voices and... Uh, he is part of Grassfed Life, uh, which I learned a ton from uh, before and when we started farming. So there's always this idea when you're gardening about, you know, increasing soil organic matter. And one of the things that regular, you know, farmers do in fields is they plant cover crops. So there's kind of this movement of growing cover crops in your gardens, too. The problem being that you have to terminate them so that you can actually plant your crop in there. So I've never done it because I've been afraid that all I'd be doing is sowing an entire garden's worth of something else that I then would probably get too busy and <laughs> never kill. And then it would reseed itself. And so I'd have like clover or vetch or, or you know, whatever. And I would, I put a lot of work into building a garden because we do it it's back true. to Eden style. It's a lot up front. And so, uh, you know, with this stuff, he just hits it with the weed whacker and, and that's great. So, but it's a, it's about using a tarp versus using cover crops to build soil. And I use tarps just to cover the soil so that weeds don't take over when I'm not using it. And, uh, that's been great, but I never really thought about it actually building soil until I pulled a tarp up at the beginning of last year. And there was worms everywhere. I yeah. mean, like, not just you could see them, but there was evidence of worm castings, poop, vermicompost all over the place. And I was like, whoa, cool. It was like a worm bin, except you didn't have to have it in your laundry room and feed it old newspaper and vegetable scraps. Very exciting. And we don't have worms because we have sand. I mean, typically there isn't a lot of worms happening. No, uh, that is true. When we moved in. Right. Okay. And now as we're gardening and doing back to Eden, which is a, you know, one technique, but it's a yeah. soil building technique. Right. Every year the garden grows a little bit and every year the worm populations increase Yeah. until you're at the garden plot. I build kind of one or two more plots of the garden every year to expand it. That's just all I have time for. And those don't have any worms in them, but the one plot closer to the house has more worms yeah. and then the yeah. one next to that has even more. Hey, Micah, how's it going, bud? Hey, Micah. And, uh, and I mean, it's like, it's pretty amazing. Now, the one thing I did notice this year with the rain that we had this week. Yeah. You remember when you were a kid, at least at my house, every time it rained, there's worms everywhere. Yes. And you drove on them and yeah. they smashed and they yeah. had that worm smell and it was just gross. Yeah. 
we never had that here. No, we don't. Until this year. Oh, we do. We don't have that worm smell because there's not a lot. But oh. I'm actually seeing worms when it rains crawling onto the driveway. Oh. And do you want to know why? Because we rotationally graze our animals. Well, we don't rotationally graze our animals next to the driveway. No, I know. But on enough of the property that it's more than just the garden. Yeah. So that's what I was trying to. So, but that's, but no, it's not that. No, it's not that. When okay. you fertilize your lawn, but we don't that fertilize. nurture, that nitrogen fertilizer is an irritant to oh. worms. So, by the, our laziness <laughs> of not well, fertilizing our lawn, which not, is a conscious choice. Yeah, it's not laziness. Saves you we've, a lot of money and you don't just, have to mow as much. We've made a conscious choice not to use chemical fertilizers. So, that choice, and in an area where we naturally don't have a lot of worms, right, has basically brought over the course of four years has brought the worms back. Yeah. Um, so wow. I thought that was pretty pretty cool. Fluff Life Farm says I watched my chicken pull one out of the ground and gobble it up. Made me so happy. So we have seen that not chickens do that, but Maddie and I walked out to the barn today, and literally as you're walking, it looks like there's little ant hills all, all over the yard yeah it's those not, are worms those are worm castings oh and little holes that worms are burrowing up in, i saw out, those and that's where they're coming out and making their way out onto the grass and you know what they're doing i had no idea that's what those were they're grabbing dead grass pulling it down eating it pooping and fertilizing the lawn Look at that. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> that is so All cool. I did was not fertilize the yard. Yeah. And nature came back and it's going to start doing it for us. Way to go. Now we're going to have to mow more. Well, I This plan like, just backfired. I kind of like to have some nice grass, <laughs> but grass that we didn't have to put a bunch of work into. Yeah. Because we have, ha I mean, the grass, like, especially out where we, um, like, walking back to the barn and stuff. Like, it's almost non-existent. Like, the ground there is so hard and yeah. packed down. Yeah, it gets beat on by the, the grass, sun all year. And, yeah. So, it would be kind of nice if some grass kind of came in and spruced up a I little I mean, bit. it always fills out. It just, I mean, it looks pretty bad this time of year. It doesn't yeah. fill out on the little nerd path that we, you know have worn between right. the house and the barn. Yeah. Like those true. little paths between buildings on the quad at the college. Yeah. yeah. Those are called nerd paths. I had no idea that those little things were from worms. Hey, learn something new every day, folks. I didn't folks. think about what they were, honestly. Yeah. I know, I, but I did notice them. That's awesome. All right. So the most clicked on story this week was not how to make a gopher, homemade gopher basket for your trees. That's a wire mesh that you plant your fruit trees in so that gophers don't eat the roots. I thought that was amazing. The uh, Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Planting Guide, the Beginner's Guide to Gardening, and then a conversation with Jeff Bezos about how he decided to start Amazon, which I thought was pretty cool. This actually was the most clicked on of this week, the Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds well, yeah, everybody's Planting Guide. Prob probably <laughs> buying their seeds. Getting and the ready. reason the reason I liked it is like, you know, you, you so you see this on like recipe blogs and you see it on, you know, all kinds of blogs. It's like, just give me the recipe. I don't need to hear <laughs> about how you went to Kathmandu and there was this shaman or whatever that, you know, cast a spell on you and you came up with this ranch dip. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I just want to know the recipe, right? That, that's never happened to you. The ranch dip. Kathmandu shaman. <laughs> I have not seen that. <laughs> well, I'm a skimmer, you know. I don't really read those things. So I just see the pictures and then I skim, skim, skim down until I find the <laughs> recipe. So all those people that are so diligent and writing out their stories for their recipes, bless their hearts. Bless their hearts, yes. I don't read them. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I'm sure somebody does. And they always have really lovely pictures too. But ain't no, I don't have time for that. Nobody's got time. For that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. Hey, they're pre it says my comment is not posting in their visual stream. Any ideas? Yeah, I'm checking the stream right now uh, oh. to see if it got, um, see if it got held back. 
for is dad watching the stream from upstairs uh D no dad's watching disney your disney plus <laughs> subscription what are they wa upstairs. they're watching that that avengers show something about mm -hmm. winter falcon oh yeah maddie and dad are watching winter falcon something Sorry, North Star Prep Setter. I don't see your comments on the YouTubes. It wasn't wasn't holding it back. So don't know what to say there. But anyway, back to this Baker Creek thing. I mean, look at it. It's just like, well done. You know, this is maybe just the nerd in me, but like, look at that. A table. Ooh. Like, get that information into, you know, you don't need all the fluff. I don't need to hear about yeah. the Katmandu shaman and no. all of this stuff. So anyway, did you really? Did, I mean, no, did you, I'm totally making that up. But well, seriously, how do you come up with some such a random thing? <laughs> like that's, that? That's just gifts, baby. That's just my. That's my. <laughs> that's a, like a spiritual gift of mine, coming up with random stuff. <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, they can see both. Yeah. All right. Oh, a full time graphic web designer. You know what, North Star? If Daily Grower grows a thing, I will hire you. Yeah, because I love computers and whatnot, and I love the back end stuff. I hate design, and I well, I don't hate I'm it. Sure. Oh, Alexa. Alexa's yelling at us. Uh, <laughs> well, you said the other word. I said the other word. That's right. <laughs> and I uh, oh, we're we're done watching this. We're good. Um, I, I just I I don't have a design. I every website that I design ends up approximating a spreadsheet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Karen will say that's because I, I love spreadsheets. I don't know that that's true. I think Daily Grower has a really nice look to it. Well, I, I mean, I think it has what white space, you it's know. It's simple. not yeah, straight but, tables I mean, and columns and whatnot. You know, sometimes yeah. you put too much fluff in there and then it's just... Yeah, I'm just trying to... Get... People just it's want... Like... They want to see the information. Well, North Star, you can go to dailygrower.com and you can tell me what you think. Just yeah. Talk. Let Tell me, us. Give us your professional opinion. Yeah, for free. Do it for free. I, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, <laughs> but seriously, though, if you wanted yeah. to do that, I would take every bit of advice that you had. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. All right. So that's Daily Grower. Remember, if you're not subscribed, go ahead. And also, send me, send me stories that you find. It's a lot of fun. I love seeing what people send me. Yeah. All right. Have you had many contributions? You know, at the beginning, I had more. I've had less recently. I think I kind of expected that. People, it's spring. People are, uh, yeah. you know, it's easier to watch something on YouTube than it is to... Well, you get busy. Than in, yeah, you just get busy. And even, you know, even yeah. we, we get busy. So yeah. it, it's been less. There it's was a few busy. people that was just like, they're just plugging their YouTube channel. And it's like, well, show me a video that you're proud of. Show me yeah. something that is useful that is like, hey, I thought I really did a good idea. But, uh, you know, there's one specific person that plugged their YouTube channel several times who I kind of am a casual acquaintance of. And I was like, there wasn't anything on the channel that I would probably feature anyway. Hmm. I mean, I'm not going to go look because it's just not it's not that's just not my jam. What, what okay. they do on their channel. So. Cool. Anyway. All right. So to the main event, shall we? Uh, we shall. We shall. All right. Uh, oh, North Star, I, I see your comment, and that's I really nice. think that's really cool, too, for third world Portable country. Portable water filter. Is it, like, oh, one of those, yeah. like, straw things? Like, you can, like, put in a bottle and just, like, or right, right in a pond and just go straight? Huh? Didn't Mark Rober have, like, a video I, about I'm the... I'm the wrong person to ask. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> Yeah. Every week, Karen and I try and come up with a topic, and they've been lamb and sheep related recently because that's just the time of year. It's lambing season. So the next has uh, been for weeks. Yeah. Our, our our next topics we're probably going to get a lot more into gardening and yeah. broilers because that's going to be our life for the yeah. next six weeks. So well, and lambing is coming to a close. That's true. So thank goodness. Yes. So we just kind of wanted to go through what's happened. Maybe you can give us the 30 second version of how this has been different. And then we can talk about managing the flock because this is something that's really difficult managing your flock and culling yeah. because you, everyone has to make that decision about whether they have pets or whether they have business or whether they are going to, you know, what they're going to manage for specific things. Right. 
uh, because your your goals, I mean, if you're, you have to have some amount of goals, right, in your farm of what it is that you're trying to do. If, if your animals are purely for pleasure, great, then that's your goal. And so you take care of them like your babies, like they're your babies and, and that's fine. And, and we have some of that on our farm. Maddie's got pet chickens, right? And, yes. and so we have had to have the hard conversations sometimes about are these pets are they something that you're using yeah for for show or for sale or for something like that and so with our sheep yeah we're managing them for multiple reasons for meat for wool for you know good mothering and for being able to actually manage our land for us right yeah which they're doing stellar on i don't have any worries you put a sheep on grass and they eat it and they all stay in the fence. So that one is probably the easiest for us. Yeah, we, for sure. We had like one that was kind of a fence jumper. and We ate him. We ate him. So, yeah. so anyway, why don't you tell That's folks. That's what happens. So give us the short version of, of well, why we're talking about this. Yeah. And, and why it matters. Okay. So every year as we come into Lamy. Hold and- on. This, uh, this segment is sponsored <laughs> by bubbly sparkling water. Hashtag not a sponsor. Do you need me? <laughs> or- <laughs> okay. We got um, the sponsorship out of the way. Okay. So every year as we come into lambing and as we're going through lambing, we're, we're looking at the lambs that are being born um, and deciding whether we're going to keep them and whether they get to stay on and help grow our flock or whether they are going to go to the butcher in the fall and be sold as meat. So there's that one step of it. But then we're also looking, as we're looking at the lambs, we're also looking at the mothers. And did the mothers do their job? Because ultimately what it comes down to when you have a flock of sheep or really any livestock is are they producing what you want them to produce so that they can at a minimum cover their own cost? And really, if you have a business, then you're also looking for them to make a profit. So a a you that either doesn't get pregnant or doesn't successfully lamb um, and have a live birth or doesn't raise her lamb and keep it alive long enough that you can butcher it is not pulling her weight basically. And, um, a ram that doesn't get the job done in the fall again, like he's not worth feeding all year long if he can't do the one job he's supposed to do. Yeah. And putting up so, with all of what you have to put up with rams. <laughs> well, we've got some pretty good rams though. Yeah. They, they but, seem to get a little more. Yeah. They they always start nice, I'll say that. Yeah. Whether they get ornery as they progress is, is uh variable. That's true. So well Duncan's older though and he's still nice. How old is he? He was like three when we got him. Oh, so he's fine. Yeah. Okay. He's our so, oldest sheep. He is our oldest sheep. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so why we're talking about this tonight is because as we've been going through lambing season, we're doing all of those things and assessing all of the new lambs and as well as all of the sheep that we retained over winter and deciding will the ones that we retained get to stay? Have they done their job and will the, or will the new ones replace them or will they just be added to the flock because they're good or whatever? So um, we're assessing those things. And then, I mean, we're also looking at, their wool and and things like that do are they producing a fiber that's worth worth keeping around are the mothers um you know doing a successful job at having babies without complications and being able to feed them and raise them uh to the size that they need to be when they go to the butcher or if they do a really good job and it's a ewe lamb, then maybe we keep the ewe lamb around because it's, it comes out of a line of mothers that is doing a good job. So anyways, we've been thinking about that and going through all of those things. And this year has been more complex 
for a number of reasons, because one, we have more sheep than we've ever had before. So that adds, there's just more variables to go into that. And then two, um, the things that I expected to be, the sheep that I expected to be making decisions on are not the only ones I have to make decisions on. And they might end up working out. And then, so where we're at with that is we went into lambing season or I did, thinking that I was going to be making decisions at the end of lambing season or come this fall about Abigail and Amelia. And the reason for that is because Abigail, this is her third lambing season, but she has yet to keep a lamb alive um, to butchering. So we haven't yet, we have yet to get a lamb out of her that has Survive. been able to be right. Yeah. So in that case, she's not producing, but it's a hard decision to make because she's the first lamb that was born on our farm. So there's like this little sentimental piece about her being the first one and like, how do we send her away? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so you kind of have to weigh those things. And it, well, another situation is Martha, the one of right. our very first flock who was, Yes. So well loved by our breeder. He he actually cried when we put her in the trailer and and drove away. Like super yeah. emotional about this sheep. So there was a little bit of me, I know, when we like, you know, the vet basically said she's never gonna have yeah. lambs again. She wouldn't breed back. That she that was like, well, then she doesn't really have a place on our farm, which sounds super cold. Right. Like, right. oh, you know, I almost thought like we should give her back, you know, but <laughs> we, he wasn't going to take her back. No. Um, no, for many reasons, he won't take her back. But yeah. And we weren't going to. We, we weren't, weren't really going to deliver her yeah. down there either. Anyways. So, so yeah, even so we've when had it means to something, make those decisions. Even when it means something already. to someone else, it's still hard to make that decision. Yeah. Yeah. So for sure. But yeah, so Martha, I mean, we had her for three seasons and she never bred for us. So we've, we've been with our small flock. A lot of producers will, I mean, they've got like a one strike you're out kind of policy where if you don't get the job done one time, whatever the issue is, then, then you're out because there's replacements and ain't nobody got time for that. But um, we've ha we have a smaller flock and we're new and we're learning. And I've always felt this little bit of like personal responsibility with all of the, with making those decisions of what if something didn't work out the way that it was supposed to because I'm not doing something correctly. And I'd hate to not give an animal another chance because I made a mistake, not because they couldn't do it. So we've, I've been kind of like slowly trying to learn how to make those decisions to call from our flock and to manage our flock so that we keep the best genetic lines moving forward so that we have a flock that's easy to manage because that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so Martha, we never got any lambs out of her, um, except for the daughter that she came with. And who has been a great mother. And then... Um, Jane? Yeah. So this year, what has happened is we had Abigail and Amelia that I thought, okay, they're my two that are on my list. And I'm going to watch them this year. I'm going to see how things go. Abigail has to keep her babies alive. And Amelia has to get pregnant and have a baby. And then we'll see what happens with it. Um, but she hadn't had... You know, she, she's on her, at, at minimum, her second year could have been her third year. And she hasn't, this is actually her first year. So last year she definitely should have lambed. I have no idea why she didn't. This year she's very pregnant. She's in a pen. I think she'll be lambing in the next 24 hours. And we'll see what happens with the babies, but she's got a really nice udder on her and she looks good. So I'm thinking maybe she got wind that like this was her last chance and she was like, well, I better put out. <laughs> <laughs> so
So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with Amelia. And so, um, but then what has happened? So they aren't my only two. So now I'm still looking at them and, and evaluating all of those things that I knew I was going to be evaluating. But then now we've had two other things happen. So the first one was with Delano. And he has what's called parrot mouth. Do we talk about this or had he not been born yet? I don't think he was born or maybe he had just been born, but I didn't realize he had parrot mouth. I think that might be true. Okay. So anyways, he's, uh, he's the one of the set of twins that we had this year. And, um, his, he has a very, very significant overbite. And that means that like his, the, his top jaw his palate does not line up with his lower jaw where his teeth are. And so for nursing purposes, he can't nurse. So is he going to be able to eat normally? Sheep don't have teeth on the top. So they just rip with the bottom and then they kind of crunch yeah. or rub it together. And then it goes down the hatch for digestion. He'll be able to eat. He's going to, he's, He's going to have a hard time if we put the, if we were to put them out on short grass, because he, it's got, the grass has got to be long enough that he can, where that overbite doesn't meet up, he can grab it and still pull it off. So, but yeah. think of two cans of salmon trying to like yeah. pick up a grain of rice. As far as the, as far as the chewing goes, like he's, he'll have the teeth in the back and his palate where he can chew like, like all the other sheep do. Yeah. So anyways, so he, what will happen with Delano is one, he will not be bred because the parrot mouth, the gene for de having that deformity is a recessive gene, which means both the mother and the father have to have it for it to show up. And which means that both Pendleton and Jane have that recessive gene. Now neither of them have it visible in their own in their own selves, but it th that gene came together for um, for Delano. Mm -hmm. Delano's twin sister, her mouth is perfect, so she lucked out. She probably carries the gene, but um, and in which case I won't be. She won't be a, a ewe lamb that we hold back. She will go to the butcher with the other. Um, with the ram lambs and what, whoever else we send. Mm -hmm. Um, but so those are decisions. Now I have to, I have to look at, and I'm still waiting to see, will we have any other parrot mouth lambs this year? If we, if Amelia, which I'm not even sure she was bred by Pendleton, So that's a whole nother thing. But anyways, depending on when, she, if she lambs tonight, it's Pendleton's lamb. If she lands tomorrow or after, it's Duncan. Well, we'll know when it comes out. So, It'll be about yeah. 10 seconds before. We yeah, we'll be able to tell it if it's tell. a cross or a full tunis. But in any case, um, we're still waiting to see on that. Now, the second one that we have to see about is, and that I is probably going to be my most difficult decision this year, is Caroline. Caroline is a ewe lamb from last year. She's not even a year old yet. She got bred. She lambed successfully, but I had to help pull dude, her, her ram lamb out. And, um, because he was his head, he was positioned correctly, but his head was a little large for her. She was struggling to get him out. So, um, I had to pull him and then, she has not appeared to have enough milk. And I say appeared because they're like the size of their udder can be deceiving. Sometimes they don't have a real big udder, but they can still feed their baby just fine. And so I'm trying to decide whether this is an issue with Caroline because she's young, whether this is an issue with her because she's just not going to have a good sized udder or it could have nothing to do with her and it could be that her lamb is just kind of lackluster and he is not thriving because of his own issues, which I, I don't fully know. But what I have seen since I took him from her and started bottle feeding him this week um, because he was starving uh, is that 
he doesn't go after the bot. Like Delano is like attacking that bottle. And dude is just kind of like, I mean, he just I think like he's properly named. He dude. I'll get to that. Yeah. Like he he's just, about as excited he, to eat as our daughter Elsa, who's like, you can't keep her at the table. I well, mean, yeah, wandering. because she sees dinner time as her opportunity to have everybody's attention. She's like, <laughs> I don't need to eat. You all are here, and I can finally tell you all the things I've been thinking about. So So those are things to watch out for. I mean, yeah. So I think that it's it's probably worthwhile to put it maybe just because I'm like a category kind of guy you know men are like waffles women are like spaghetti sort of thing. sure there's like immediate cullable offenses right yeah you had a baby and you don't feed it you're right. out so if they reject that, that, the is, lamb, that is a hundred percent if we out. have a you that rejects her her baby or doesn't like doesn't clean it off is just like yeah, so I got pregnant, but I am not all about this mothering gig. Yeah, they're done. That There's no more tries on that. That's just like, y- you don't get another try. And now in the case of Caroline, who was a young you, yes. bred, bred to a, a larger ram, yes. where we had to pull, yes. so, some people would be like, she didn't do it herself, she's out. Right. And in my opinion, that's a wait and see. Right. That's like a holding pattern. She has one more year. Well, she's still got a lot to grow up. Like she's still got a fair amount of physical growth to happen. And so, yeah, if that had been the only thing personally, um, the lamb was positioned correctly. It was, but she was young and that was my doing. So like, we can't, Cull because we decided to right. read I, her. I mean, it's not so. Some would consider it early. Some would say whatever. No, if they can get pregnant, lots get them pregnant. Of farms that expose their ewe lambs, and um, from what I've read and from what I've experienced, fifty percent of ewe lambs will breed on their first season, and fifty percent will not. And we had that this year. We had two ewe lambs, one bred, one didn't. Mm. So, um, and that's just like a physical maturity thing, whether they will breed or won't. Yeah. And so that that's in the same light, like if they don't breed that first season, we don't get rid of them for not breeding. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I have a little how, bit how, of leniency for those young ewe lamb mothers. If, if I chose to put them in with the ram, their first season and I didn't hold them back, then I'm kind of like, well, do we give them another shot? Yeah. Um, So we have two questions that I think we should address. At what age is it too late to cull for decent meat? How long do you keep a productive animal? Uh, And do you prefer to cull or sell? Um, Rams who are doing their job, we... We have sold a ram yes. that we did not need anymore. Well, we bought him as breeding stock, we and so breeding. we and we sold him as breeding stock. And we sold him as breeding stock. He couldn't breed here anymore. Our flock is too small, so he would be, <clears throat> you know, breeding back daughters, and we didn't want to do that right away because we didn't know what we were doing, right? Yeah. And so we chose to sell him. Yeah. Uh, since we have registered purebred stock. We don't believe in selling them if they have defects, right? So, right. so uh, Delano, Larry the Lip, he's we're not going to sell him, no, because he has a gene that isn't like it isn't like we're show sheep people, no. and it's like oh he's not perfect to the standards. Like that's an actual defect that if we hadn't intervened, he would have died, right. and so we don't want that continuing into the gene pool we don't want someone else to have to deal with that right yeah so um so in that case we'll we'll call that's an ethical decision for us yeah we'll we'll call him that's what we that's what we're going to choose to do uh for the ewes that don't produce don't have babies or that uh you know orphan their lamb we were that's that's also a genetic thing 
and we'll call yeah. for that as well. That, although here's the thing though, and I would say this for both for Delano, like if somebody would wanted a weather and they were like, Oh, I just want to keep him as a pet. Oh yeah. Go for it. I, I would totally be willing to castrate him and sell him as a weather and let somebody enjoy him that way. If that's what they really wanted. The, the, but, okay. So let me, but I would not sell him intact and leave the possibility for somebody else to breed him because enough. I don't think it's in that sense. A good thing Rams kind of have a better chance of survival for a cullable offense because they can be castrated and still be used in someone else's flock. Say he had the most beautiful wool you've ever yeah. seen. He'd probably get castrated. Sure. He would be a weather and, well, and, and, and could be sold or used by us for wool production. Right. Right. And if we were strictly raising for fiber purposes, then we would probably have more weathers on our farm that we were that like, oh, we love their fiber, but we don't want to breed them. We'll, we'll keep them as a weather for a fiber animal. Yeah. And there are a lot of fiber <laughs> farms that do, that do that. Yeah. Um, and they, they, so they pull animals from their breeding lines, but they still retain the animal for fiber pur purposes. But because we're raising for both fiber and meat, and because we have a relatively small setup, um, it doesn't make sense for us to keep, to retain a lot of animals that can't like fulfill all of those purposes. So, um, at what age I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, Fluff Life are, um, what most people do. Hold, hold on. We have, oh. a, we have some special guests. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi people. This is Maddie. You remember her chicken phenomenon. And this is grandpa. Did hey, you wow. have... Now you know how the sausage is made. Yeah. 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 Did you? I see you're not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's not much different than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Oh, a tractor supply. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to know. We like you were advertising. Supply. Yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sponsored. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. My hat not is sponsored. like crazy though. Sorry, I you're gonna have it. to put her back in the wardrobe yes. and makeup. So <laughs> yeah, I feel like I should fix my hair or something. <laughs> I, well, that's what happens when you look at yourself. It's like a, this mirror, and then you're like, "Oh, I have to." Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> you don't go out in public like this. Well, do I did I? get a haircut, you know. So oh, perfect. that's good. And I, and I shaved, and well, kind of. You're ready to be here. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Well, should we leave now? Thanks, well, thanks did, for dropping did by. Did you just I want guess. to come in and say hello, or did you have? Well, like, I don't know. We don't know what's what's on topic of discussion. We're talking time. about culling and flock management. Yeah, I don't have much to add. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. Okay, you, see you later. <laughs> Farewell, right. people. Uh, yeah, excellent. on the interwebs. On the interwebs. Yes. Okay. Thanks so, for stopping by. Yeah. All right. Okay. The questions. At what age is it too late to call for decent meat? Here is my opinion on that. I don't think there's any age um, that is too late. And here's why. You Most people would say, oh, if it's lamb, it needs to be um, under a year old. And that's when the meat is the best. You shouldn't be butchering meat or sheep after a year of age because then it's mutton and mutton is no good. I would say that that's incorrect. Maybe that is true of more like industrial uh, sheep farms and um, as far as meat goes, but for ours, which is grass fed and we don't use any grain um, they're, our, not, they're not running long distances. They're not running anywhere. I mean, they run occasionally, but for their own fun. Um, our meat for, we've, we've butchered older sheep as well as our lambs and it's all delicious. So, I mean, what's the oldest sheep that we butchered? Martha. She was, she was four. No, four, three. Uh, no, because she was 
two when Let, we let's got. Let's just say less than five years old, right? She so. was maybe she might have been five years old. She was four or five when we butchered her. Okay. And um, I'll tend to agree. I don't think that it's there's two old. One is because um, I just we I, I personally wouldn't want to. I would consider that to be a waste, right? To yeah. give it to someone else. Uh, if, if it was something, uh, if it was an animal that we really had an attachment to like a pet that we decided we were going to keep, make a conscious decision to keep it, yeah. then we would not butcher them. Right. And we would let them die naturally. Right. But I the... also don't have anywhere to put or bury that carcass. <laughs> so from a practical point, if yeah. we had a backhoe on a tractor or a, or you know, I guess we'd call the neighbor with a bobcat and dig a hole for it. There's yeah. just that practical thing that it's easier to take it to the butcher and get rid of it. But I think Karen hit it spot on, which is the quality of the animal over its lifetime uh, kind of breaks down all of those, uh, I guess, rumors maybe about stereotypes, stereotypes yeah. about about their being, yeah. uh, you know, this this problem with the meat maybe it's tougher that's fine guess what hamburger sausage yeah. there's enough spices and grinding that happens in that process that you would never really know if it yeah is... but we got chops and and, and, and stuff from martha and and we also chose a breed that was very well known for their meat yeah so there's that as well so i mean obviously every animal is different because breed matters how the raised matters and the last thing is People complain all the time about venison and how gamey it is. Guess what? A gamey deer probably sat, you know, hanging at deer camp for a day and a half. And then probably sat in a trailer or on top of somebody's car till it was driven to the butcher. Or somebody gut shot it and some amount of meat that, you know, had some goo that shouldn't have been touching meat. Like it would never touch meat in an industrial meat packing plant, right? Or a yeah. big plant had some amount of digestive or intestinal something that touched it and didn't get properly removed. That's what makes meat gamey. Okay. It's, it's, it's decomposition <laughs> that makes it gaminess or being fouled. So if you have a clean animal that has had a clean life that was butchered cleanly, I, uh, you know, I, I really would question if, it had anything to do the, with the age if there was some sort yeah. of off and gamey taste. It, it could be the breed, you know, it could yeah. be how it is uh, that uh, that breed just doesn't taste good. You know, maybe it got into some weed or something that gave it an off taste. Yeah. I don't really think that's necessarily possible given how much processing an animal with a rumen does. But either way, thanks, North Star. Thanks for coming. Uh, appreciate you um, coming and for all the chatter that you provide. So, I, I, I mean, to us, there is no limit. There is no limit. We, we do not call for age. We, I should say we won't call for age. We have never had an animal that well, has gotten that old. That's not, other... I wouldn't say that's true though, either. I well, mean, if we any, get a Anytime you they, that we is... would call for age, it would because they can't, the animal can't do what the animal needs to do on right. the farm, right? If the animal is hurt and can't be rotationally grazed and yeah. we have to keep feeding it hay in the barn when everyone else is out there, right. that may be age because they weren't able to you know, overcome that injury. But in that case, I would say the injury was what happened that the animal needed to be called, right? Yeah, but I think there's lots of things that we, we haven't even gotten into because of the age of our farm yeah. that, uh, yeah, that we will, we will we haven't be... been in this long enough to answer this question. Well, not completely. I no. mean, we have people that we look to that have been in it longer than we have that we can look at their example and, and how they make those decisions. And like, I would say, um, I think use get to a point at by the time they're eight to 10 years old, where they can, they can start decreasing on their productivity as far as breeding goes. Um, or maybe they have the, I think a big thing that can happen as they get older is they have a harder time keeping 
a good condition on their body while pregnant and nursing. And so it's like, do you want to keep this animal that you have to put a lot of extra inputs in to keep it healthy enough to do its job? Or do you want to say, you know what, she's done her job well, and now she gets to retire, whatever that's going to look like, you know, whether we were to, whether we were to have a point where we said, oh, we're going to keep her and let her just be a pet, or whether we would send her to the butcher. Um, you know, either yeah. of those things you're, would be an option, right. but that, there, those there is a point age, where age, those would be age factors. Right. Yes. Yeah. Where an age factor is going to come in and we're going to have to decide what are we going to do with this animal if they can't continue doing their job because of their age. Yeah. So, um, All right, I do re we, I rescind my answer. Okay. Do we per, Okay, so we've answered those two questions. Do we prefer to call or sell? Um, at this point, I would say we prefer to call. And the reason why is because we are so young in our learning how to breed and seeing what will come out of the genetics of our flock that um, I don't feel like I have quite quite enough experience with my animals to sell breeding stock and feel like I can really like guarantee somebody that I'm selling them something really great. Like I, for instance, I did not know that we had uh, the gene for parrot mouth in our flock until it showed up this year. So there, we, we may have had, lambs in the past three years that had that gene carried it but didn't show it and if we had sold them as breeding stock then we're passing that along and now we may still end up doing that because I mean we bought very good breeding stock and we've been very happy with our breeding stock but that gene was in there so Basically, what I'm saying is we're still kind of testing the genetics of our flock by breeding. And so at this point, I prefer to send animals that we aren't retaining ourselves to the butcher and sell them as meat over selling them as breeding stock. I wouldn't say we'll never sell as breeding stock, but at this point, that's kind of where I'm at. I kind of see it as like if you go on Craigslist and you're going to buy something and it's a really good deal and then you buy it and you realize, oh, now I know why they were selling this because it this doesn't work or such and such thing is broken. I kind of feel like for us to sell something that we we probably should have called, right? But, well, we would never sell something that we know has some sort of defect to I it. I know, but I, right. answering the question generically, this is like what the sale barn is for, right? Getting rid of animals. Oh, And, and those yeah. kinds of animals are... We don't take to the sale typi barn. Typically, typically, that's where the problem goes, right? Because yeah. you can get some money out of that problem. I would... It's a little bit of money, but I mean, that is to me, like, I would not feel proper i would not feel right yeah. about selling someone a problem because no. more than likely they won't at least with breeding problems they're not going to know that that was a problem for a year right or, and then they put a whole year they into put it a whole year i mean we've already had that experience ourselves and with martha mm -hmm. i mean and we put three years into her before we knew that she was not going to breed back mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a hard thing to accept as a farmer, as somebody who's just starting out and looking at your flock and going, I put a lot into this animal and I did not get what I expected to get out of it. So, um, yeah, it, that, it's a challenging thing, but for us, yeah, I would say at this point we prefer to call versus sell, um, we do not take animals to the sale barn. If I won't breed it myself, and and I would say I feel this way about like anything that I'm selling. 
I tell people when we're selling mattresses, I'm like, if I wouldn't sleep on it, I'm not selling it. So if I pick up something that's nasty, I'm not going to try to like spruce it up and make it look good enough that somebody will buy it. I'm going to take it to the dump. And with animals, if I wouldn't breed it myself, then I'm not going to try to sell it to you and be like, best of luck to you. Because I, I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want somebody to do that with me. I would want somebody to be completely like, Hey, I'm selling this thing. It's the best thing I've got. I'm willing, I'm, I'm willing to, to back it. Yeah. And like, you and, know, and, and that's why we ask for a reasonable and fair price for it as well. Right. We, uh, I don't believe we've ever negotiated on price for an animal that we've no. sold. Yeah. And the prices. Or that we've purchased. That's right. Because we won't buy it unless we think that it's, you know. Yeah. I mean, given how much hassle we've had this year, right? And none of that really was, really was anyone's fault. No. Right? Like buying an animal that is a hassle that somebody else knew about, it's totally worth it right. to get a better, to get a breeder that you trust and pay, say if you pay $300 for sheep, a sheep normally. Pay 500 bucks. Guess what? That $200 is, in my mind, that is totally worth it. Yeah. Totally worth it to find someone that you trust. And, you know, that isn't just cheap. That's in life in general. Yeah. But it's it's like the amount of problems that you can get from just one animal, especially breeding stock, who's going to pass those problems on possibly. You're just, you're asking for multiple years right. of, of pain. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I would say this year has been a true testament of like, even when you purchase looking for the best and pay for what should be the best, you don't always know up to a hundred percent what you're getting. And it's not because somebody's being dishonest. It's just because until you've mixed those genetics up, like thrown those dice so many times, like you just never know what you're going to get. You know, Jane, this, this was her first year being bred to Pendleton. Um, she, but this is her third lambing season. And so she's now had, she had a ram lamb her, or no, she, she had Betsy. So she had a ewe lamb her first season. She had a ram lamb her second season. And then now she had a set of twins. Great. Love that she had twins. One of them has a deformed mouth. That's bad. <laughs> so it's like, but here's the thing too with her, because it's a recessive gene and if it only showed up in that one breeding pair between Pendleton and Jane, we have the option where Jane won't be bred back to Pendleton, but she will be bred to Duncan. She's still a good you. She's done a great job with her mothering. She's raised up healthy lambs. Um, she delivered both of those twins and did a great job with them. I had no idea she had twins. I was like <laughs> so surprised. And she did everything she could to take care of Delano. She did not leave him. She did not like try to reject him. She wanted him, but he, he couldn't nurse from her. So that was no fault of hers. And um, we can we have the option to have a different pairing and, and still keep her. Now, if we get more lambs out of Pendleton with parrot mouth, he will be the one to go. The ewes won't because it's a recessive gene thing. And it's like, we don't need to get rid of all of them. We just need to have a ram that doesn't carry that trait. Right. So, and again, with having a small flock, he's going to go anyway. Right. He he's only, he's he only, only going to stay for so around long. for a little while. <clears throat> well, with having the two rams that we have, we could keep them and rotate them for quite a while before we would, but um, but yeah, so we'll see, we'll see if it turns up with any other lambs and if that shortens, uh, Pendleton's breeding life here at the farm. Yeah. Well, this was great. Yeah. I think it's probably time to, uh, check 
be finished and check on the old lamb cam. But she, she is. Eh, she's just being a sheep. Just wandering around. Well. She still has the uh, sunken inside there. Yeah. We really need to figure out a way to get this on the computer so I don't have to hold it up like that. But, you know, it could be any day. Could it be any minute? Any, well, not any minute. I don't think it's going to be any, any minute. Any She's hour. not quite to that point. But... They usually do this about midnight, don't they? Just right <laughs> no. as I want to go to bed. <laughs> Maybe. The first one was born late yeah. this year. All right. Well, so, thanks a lot, everybody. Yeah. Appreciate you being on with us. Uh, don't forget, if you're not subscribed, hit subscribe so you can be notified when we go uh, online. Otherwise, facebook.com slash daily grower or Randy Kleinman on YouTube. Just subscribe both of those places. Yeah. Also, you can subscribe on Daily Grower itself. And the next feature I'm putting on the web is to uh, highlight and show our next uh, live show. So that way, if you subscribe oh. to Daily Grower, you'll also see when the live shows are coming. So this is a awesome. something I did not expect when I started Daily Grower that we would do, but it might just be the most fun part. We've really enjoyed it. Yeah. So yeah, we love talking <clears throat> to you guys. We love hearing what you're doing and answering questions. And I just feel like it's a it's a good time and it's a good learning opportunity for us too. Yeah. So also new vlog out today with the brand new vlog camera, <laughs> Medium Larry. And, medium uh, Larry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, have Just, a great. Justin's going to love that. Yeah. Well, it's going to be great. Yeah. Have a great weekend, everyone.